Welcome everyone. Please feel free to come a little farther up. My name is Julia Adams. I'm the head of Grace Hopper College and a professor of sociology here at Yale. I am absolutely thrilled to see so many students, faculty, staff, members of the Yale leadership, and friends of the college here today. I also want to thank a number of special guests for joining us on this occasion. Admiral John Richardson, Rear Admiral Samuel Cox, Roger and Deborah Murray, Captain Paul Whitescarver, Captain Wayne Grasdock, Commander Keith Lancer, and Yale's own ROTC. Welcome. <laughs> I would now like to introduce the Navy Band's Northeast Brass Quintet and musician third class Gene Register on keyboard. Will those who are able and who are not already standing please stand for the national anthem? Thank you for that splendid rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> this occasion means a great deal to our community. We admire the astonishing achievements and spirit of Grace Murray Hopper and take inspiration from her extraordinary accomplished life. This ceremony is also a symbolic culmination of years of discussion in the college and at Yale, some of it recently in this very room, the Roosevelt L. Thompson Dining Hall. How delightful that the confluence of talk, arguments, and decisions produced this excellent outcome and new beginning. What do names matter, people often ask us, and we have certainly asked ourselves. In fact, in that relationship among names, symbols, and the multifaceted biographies of the people behind the symbols, they matter a great deal. We do honor to those whose names are associated with a beautiful, beloved building and community, and we hold ourselves to high standards in so doing. We grapple intellectually with both the complexity of the lives and experiences that produce the people whom we honor and their impact upon the world. Yes, in Yale's residential colleges, we also have and make fun with in-house nicknames, chants in intramural sports, and so forth, but that doesn't diminish the respect and affection one whit. My husband, associate head of college, Hans van Dyke, our residential college dean, April Ruiz, myself, we have all noticed a new and vibrant feeling emerging in the college as this summer turns to fall. We feel buoyed up, renewed, and we are grateful. On that note, I am delighted to introduce President Peter Salovey, who will be making the first set of remarks today. Thank you, Professor Adams. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. Being here to dedicate Grace Hopper College. I want to thank our distinguished guests who are with us today. As you heard, we're pleased that members of the family of Rear Admiral Hopper, her nephew, Roger Murray, his daughter, Deborah, could be here today with us. I want to extend our appreciation to Admiral John Richardson, the Chief of Naval Operations for the United States Navy, 
for joining us today as well. Thank you, Roger, Deborah, Admiral Richardson, for helping us mark a historic occasion. And it's a great honor to have you all with us today. This afternoon, we honor the life of Grace Murray Hopper, an extraordinary Yale graduate whose achievements span decades, changed the way we understand and use computers. And we also reflect on what her life means for us today. We know that our namesakes do not lie cold and still in the vast recesses of history. Their lives, their legacies, reach across the years and speak to us, sometimes with great force. What does Grace Hopper say to us and to Yale today? First, she tells us that the examined life is the only life worth living. Propelled by an insatiable curiosity, Grace Hopper was always asking questions about the world around her. After Yale, where she received her master's and PhD in mathematics, she taught the subject at Vassar. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor and the US entry into World War II, she wanted to serve her country. She enlisted in the Navy and was assigned to work on the world's first computer, the Mark I. From that time forward, Grace Hopper was constantly imagining new problems for the computer to solve, new ways to use the enormous capabilities she envisioned for it. Many people told her that computers could never do what she wanted them to do. Turns out, they were wrong. Over the next several decades, she pioneered automatic programming and new word-based computer languages. She made it possible for ordinary people to use computers, not just mathematicians and engineers. And she did all of this because she never stopped thinking. Her curiosity was truly endless. Second, Grace Hopper teaches us to embrace change. Humans, she loved to say, are allergic to change, but she wasn't. She encouraged her younger colleagues to take risks as well. She told them it was always easier to ask forgiveness than it is to get permission. By empowering them to think for themselves, she helped launch them on their own successful careers. Admiral Hopper was at the vanguard of a new era, at a time when opportunities for women, especially in math and engineering, were extremely limited. She charted a remarkable course. She insisted on her place at the table, in the laboratory, and at the helm. As we celebrate the history of women at Yale, soon 50 years at Yale College and 150 years at the university, we recognize Grace Hopper's trailblazing leadership and example. Finally, Grace Hopper's life speaks clearly to us about the importance of service. As a teacher, mentor, and distinguished naval officer, she served others and her country with courage and dedication. Admiral Hopper received dozens of honors and awards in her lifetime, but she said the highest award she would ever receive was the privilege and responsibility of serving proudly in the United States Navy. Today, Admiral Hopper calls each of us to discover a greater purpose a calling worthy of our curiosity, talents, and creativity. I've always been more interested in the future than in the past, she once said. Today, we also look to the future, to the future of Hopper College. Here, students will live, learn, and challenge each other to live lives of meaning and purpose. One day, like Grace Hopper, they too will change the world. Thank you all for being here.
Thank you, President Salovey, for your inspiring words. We will now hear from Roger Murray, Grace Hopper's nephew. It's such a privilege to have family members here with us today. Thank you. I would like to thank Yale and all those who mentioned my aunt as a candidate for a residential college name for this, and for this wonderful honor. Although she left the academic world, my aunt was always a teacher at heart. It is significant that Yale is honoring a woman who was a pioneer in the computer field when, even today, there are still some who doubt women's abilities in this area. The PhD in mathematics my aunt received from Yale helped pave the way for her assignment as a naval officer to work with Har Howard Aiken at the Harvard Computation Lab, which was the beginning of my aunt's career with computers. My aunt was very dedicated to her work and a very determined individual. Once she had a goal, she had the ability to recognize and successfully pursue the steps necessary to reach that goal. As I was growing up, my aunt traveled extensively for Remington Rand. She would send me from post postcards from the places she visited, always signed, Hastily Grace. When my children were young, she sent them wonderful children's books, which my grandchildren are now enjoying. One of the things I enjoyed most about my aunt was her dry sense of humor comments usually delivered with an absolutely straight face. One time she opened a speech by saying, as I look around the room, I don't see many women, but don't worry, I will go slowly and hopefully you can keep up. <laughs> if my aunt were here today, I know three things she would say to you. As a naval officer, she would tell you that a ship in port is safe but that's not what ships are for. Secondly, she would say, the most damaging phrase in the language is, we've always done it this way. That is why she had a clock that ran counterclockwise in her office. And lastly, and redundantly, she would tell you, if it's a good idea, go ahead and do it. It is much easier to apologize than it is to get permission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray, for your reminiscences, which bring Grace Hopper vividly before us. It is my honor now to introduce the speaker for our final set of remarks, Admiral John Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations. Well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak today, President Salovey. Thanks for the invitation. Also want to just echo my uh, welcome to the family members of uh, Grace Hopper. It's just so wonderful that you could be here. And then a shout out to the uh, NROTC unit who's here in force and looking good in whites. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us here today uh, as really an ex the latest expression, perhaps, of what has been a long and very rich tradition of uh, a real rich relationship between the Navy and Yale starting really uh, back in the Revolutionary War times when Yale student David Bushnell invented the submarine turtle and did a, an attack in New York Harbor against a, a British warship. And through history, there has been just a groundbreaking uh, relationship, almost a love story really, between Yale and the Navy. Uh, in, uh, th just before World War I, it was uh, Yale uh, University that stood up a, a flying club, the Millionaires Unit, they called themselves. And uh, they led the way into uh, naval aviation in World War I. And ever since then, uh, Yale has had a, uh, a close relationship, not only with the Navy, but particularly with naval aviation. In 1926, this is when the Navy first officially started the Naval Reserve Officer Training Candidate Program we started with six schools in 1926, Yale being among those original six schools uh, for that scholarship program. And then uh, through World War II, uh, a, a vast relationship where Yale really opened its doors to uh, the Navy and other services to help uh, train 
officers and scientists and solve some of our hardest problems uh, during World War II. And so it's truly an honor to be here at Yale uh, to celebrate that going forward. And it's what a terrific uh, choice to name this college after Admiral Grace Hopper, a renowned risk taker, as you have heard, a visionary leader in the field of computer science, and again, just an absolute uh, terrific choice to uh, name this college. And uh, you know, at the start of World War II, as you heard, uh, Admiral Hopper gave up her career, really, as an, a, a very accomplished university uh, mathematics professor to join the Navy under the uh, Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, or the WAVES program, perhaps the greatest acronym ever, you know, is, uh, and, uh, and you know, you may not know this, but her initial application into the Navy was design, de denied uh, because she was 15 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. And she was older than typical applicants at the time. And she also was working in a field, you know, critical and determined to be absolutely essential in the civilian workforce. But I'll tell you what, you know, there's a destroyer uh, that's home ported in Pearl Harbor named the USS Grace Hopper. And the call sign for that destroyer is Amazing Grace. And uh, you know, that, that weight limit was not gonna stop Amazing Grace. And sure enough, she submitted a waiver, was accepted, graduated first in her officer candidate school class at the age of 37, and then became a naval officer. And as you've heard, during her 43-year naval career, Admiral Hopper pioneered work in the field of computer programming from her work on the very first computer, the Mark I, to her conceptualization and realization of the first compiler, she really paved the way for the Navy in the digital revolution. And in many ways, we're still trying to catch up with Admiral Hopper's vision. Uh, today, I talk a lot about the digital Navy. And it is not a stretch at all to consider that this talk and our way forward as being really influenced heavily by Admiral Hopper in the way that the Navy strives to employ information technology and see how these tools will be absolutely critical in our future Navy. You know, uh, in the 1970s, amongst her other accomplishments, Admiral Hopper advocated for the Department of Defense to replace these large centralized computer systems with a network of small distributed systems where each user on the network could access information in a central database. You know, in many ways, it, which is second nature to us now, we call it the cloud. She envisioned this uh, decades ago. And this way of thinking is really the driving force behind our current efforts to network our fleet together in ways that are reliable, secure, and that provide maximum flexibility. And so, uh, you know, these initiatives, this thinking, really are only possible because of the solid foundation that Admiral Hopper worked so hard to establish. And they ensure that the U.S. Navy will sustain operational and technical agility in the information age. And as I said, in many ways, we're still trying to catch up to Admiral Hopper. And to do so, we'll need to channel not only her exquisite intellect, uh, but also her boundless energy, her bold determination, and her appetite for risk. So again, let me just congratulate Yale University again and the entire Yale student body for this historic occasion. Grace Hopper's example will serve as an inspiration for generations of future Yale students and faculties who will walk the halls of this terrific place and will serve as a sign, a continuing sign, of the close bond between Yale and the Navy. Thank you again for allowing me to speak. Thank you so much, Admiral. Your words mean a great deal to us all. We've now arrived at the blessing portion of our program, and so I'd like to invite Sharon Kugler, university chaplain, to come to the podium. They called her Amazing Grace, and now we call this place her namesake, our home. This has been a rebirth of sorts, 
and we have all been caring midwives to this beautiful and joyous occasion. Grace Hopper had a tenacious belief in the virtue of service and the vast capacity of innovation, and though small in physical frame, she had a wide, vigorous embrace for the bright promise of the future. We can be reasonably confident that she would be beaming with pride and joy to see all of you gathered here. I confess that as someone who majored in math in college and who was a fan of her work way back then, I could not be more delighted to offer the blessing. I now invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. Oh, divine mystery, you hold us throughout all our stories, and we are elated to be together in this space to begin a new one. Bless the many students, faculty, and fellows who have been an integral part of this college in the past. May they return often, smile at what they see, and take pleasure in their own cherished memories of time spent within these walls. Bless those that belong to this college now. Grace Murray Hopper is your home, and your considerable gifts will thread their way through its entryways, suites, rooms, tables, and courtyard, creating meaningful traditions and building a legacy that will inspire generations to come. Bless those whose labor makes this place feel like home. Bless those who cook, who clean, who care for the grounds, and who tend to all the countless details that make this college flow. Bless those who lead this college as they cultivate an environment that nurtures our hearts, celebrates our discoveries, guides our way, and offers safe harbor in challenging times. May all of us who are part of this rebirth, this new story, be inspired by the life of Grace Murray Hopper. May we too be blessed with a tenacious belief in the great promise of the future. And may our hearts be stirred again and again by the story of one amazing grace. For this we say with great joy, amen. I now invite Professor Adams, Dean Chun, and President Salovey forward for a special presentation. We have a special presentation to make, and uh, the Yale Board of Trustees, the Yale Corporation, is represented here by John Rice, and I'm going to ask him to join us, too, if he wouldn't mind. This is the official moment. Okay. Should I come to this other side? Yes. And we are going to call on Yale College Dean Marvin Chun to give us a little hand with this. Not yet, we're not giving to you. Oh, So an important uh, symbol of college identity is the ceremonial mace, uh, which is usually uh, kept hidden uh, until uh, the day of commencement um, for seniors. Um, this uh, particular new mace was um, created by Mark uh, uh, Sphiri, um, from Bucks County in Pennsylvania. Uh, he has um, created other maces for this college. Um, and what's very meaningful about this beautiful mace is that the wood is from a tree that, that uh, used to stand in the, um, in the courtyard of this college. Um, and, um, and the uh, coat of arms is here uh, embedded at, at the head. Um, and, and so um, the dean of, of uh, Hopper College will be um, carrying this at commencement every year. Um, but we brought it out uh, today to commemorate uh, this uh, beautiful and um, meaningful occasion uh, to the dedication of Grace Hopper College. And so we will present this uh, to uh, Head Adams. So, uh, together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for sharing in this special ceremony. Now I'm going to turn things over to launch our celebration to the Navy band, Anchors Away. Please join us for the reception in the courtyard, and thank you again for coming. <laughs>